There are people in America who desire to remove the constitutional checks and balances designed into our carefully crafted republic. They believe that if we instituted a pure democracy within the United States, that the freedom of the people would be expanded and quicker responses to tragic events would be possible. It may sound empowering to hear of a nation without an electoral college, where the popular vote of the majority could elect whomever they wished to get the policies they demanded. But, under a pure democracy, could something else, much more ominous, transpire? What if America had been governed by a purely democratic government, like the one we just described following the 9-11 attacks? What if a majority had requested that the president single-handedly institute the necessary changes to prevent such an atrocity from ever happening again? This president could have quickly ordered new security measures, expanded policing authorities, and expanded military powers to enable the defense of our nation from terrorists and their supporters. After this president used these emergency powers to enact his security measures, what mechanisms in a pure democracy would have ensured that these expanded powers would return to the control of the people for the sake of our rights. Many Americans do not see how a democracy without limits could rapidly empower a president to deal with the crisis while simultaneously enabling him to deprive the people of their rights. Within a pure democracy, there would be no way for the people to get their rights back. Historically, examples like Pericles, Cromwell, Napoleon, Hitler, and Chavez have shown us how the people suffered when they granted individual powers and rights to others which superseded their own. The Republic, defined by our Constitution, provides the people with a means to protect our lives, liberty, and property in a manner that pure democracy cannot. Established within our constitutional system are essential checks and balances, which pure democracy does not possess, including explicit statement of our inalienable rights, the state republics, the three branches of our federal government, and a host of deliberative legal procedures meant to methodically govern the way each is permitted to interact with one another. Most importantly, there is no means by which any of our rights or these checks and balances may legally be subverted unless almost all of the checks have failed to act on our behalf. We are a nation of 51 republics. Only one of those republics is answerable to the others and all of them, along with the people, are answerable to the laws written within the Constitution. The wisdom of our system lies in its deliberative governing procedures and its separation of powers. In America, this means that the rights of the people cannot be quickly subdued because the forces of oppression must run over not just a single government to deprive the people of their rights, but also a majority of the state governments before any such effort may ultimately succeed. Mm -hmm.